We've talked about several theories of chemical bonding. So far, we've covered Lewis dot structures, uh, valence bond theory, and hybridization. We're now going to talk about the fourth and most sophisticated way of talking about bonding in chemistry. That is molecular orbital theory. Uh, what we're doing, as we did in uh, valence bond theory and hybridization, we're going to extend quantum mechanics that we talked about in atoms. We're going to extend that to molecules. And we're going to use the same kinds of methods that we used for atoms. We're primarily going to talk, since molecules usually have more than one electron, we're primarily going to talk about the variation method to solve the Schrodinger equation, uh, not so much the perturbation method, although we will mention that a little while later. But for now, uh, let's talk about molecular orbital theory. Now let's contrast uh, molecular orbital theory with uh, the valence bond theory. Now in valence bond, uh, what we talked about is that we had an atom here, and the atom had various orbitals coming out of it. Sometimes these orbitals would be like atomic orbitals, or sometimes they'd be hybrid orbitals. And then you might have another atom here, and then uh, that atom would have atomic orbitals and you have an overlap here, the overlap of atomic or hybrid orbitals together will give you a chemical bond. So the key point here is that the atoms that you're overlapping in the valence bond method and the hybridization method is um, those are localized atomic orbitals and so the bonds you get here are bonds that just have electron density buildup between the two atoms. However, in molecular orbital theory, we consider not just a localized bond between two atoms, but we consider the entire system might have an orbital associated with it. So uh, molecular orbital theory, we look at not just uh, individual atomic orbitals or hybrid orbitals on atoms. Instead, we consider the entire molecule as a single system. So the entire molecule, you have uh, nuclei of the atoms in the molecule, and they're stationary and fixed, as we'll see. And then you then have um, electrons you pour into that. And these electrons don't necessarily need to stick on the atoms. The electrons can move around, and that gives rise to molecular orbitals. Okay, now a little uh, nomenclature here. Uh, wave functions are now um, molecular wave functions. So we talked about wave functions in terms of atoms. We talked about the hydrogen atom, the helium atom, and so on. Uh, those are centered on an atom. But now that we have a molecule, we talk about the wave function of the entire molecule rather than just a single atom. And also, uh, although we're not real clear about what orbitals are, uh, are orbitals the wave function? Are orbitals wave function squared? Or are orbitals some sort of uh, probability contour line that given a certain probability within that contour line, you'll find an electron? Well, we don't really know precisely. We, the chemists don't have a precise definition of orbitals, but somehow they're associated with a uh, wave function. So when you talk about molecular wave functions, wave functions of electrons in the entire molecule. Another way chemists talk about that is molecular orbitals. And these orbitals then, uh, just like atomic orbitals, we found using the Pauli principle that we can put at most two electrons in a single uh, orbital. Uh, same way here, these molecular orbitals, same way, you'll get molecular orbitals. You can only put two electrons in each orbital. And therefore, these orbitals are wave functions for one or a pair of electrons. So that's the introduction to molecular orbital theory. In the next section, we'll talk or we'll apply molecular orbital theory to the H2 plus molecule.